Good afternoon. My name is James Williams, and I'm the County Counsel for the County of Santa Clara. Thank you for joining us for an important update and announcement today with respect to COVID-19. Uh, joining me this afternoon are a, a number, over 20, uh, healthcare professionals and paramedics who are dealing with the front lines of the increase in hospitalizations here in Santa Clara County and speaking this afternoon with some important announcements and updates. Uh, joining me will be Dr. Sarah Cody, our County Public Health Officer, Dr. Clifford Wang, Chair of the Department of Medicine at Valley Medical Center, Elizabeth Bruley, RN, the Emergency Department Manager at O'Connor Hospital, and available for questions will be Dr. Jeff Smith, the County Executive, and Dr. Ahmad Kamal, the Head of the Emergency Operations Center Healthcare Surge Branch. I'm going to begin by turning it over to Dr. Cody, who's going to talk about where we currently are uh, with respect to cases and hospitalizations, and then I will come back and talk more about some of the updates that we're making today. Thank you, James. Um, Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you so much uh, for joining us. Today, I have some sobering news to share, and I know that this news is not what any of us would like to hear, uh, nor is this situation uh, one that any of us would like to be in. But nevertheless, uh, here we are. And I also know that many people living in our county have been making extraordinary sacrifices uh, over the last many months uh, since February. And now we are asking everyone to do more, even more. The decisions that we are making today are extraordinarily difficult ones, far more difficult than they were when we made similar decisions in March. Um, however, uh, we have come to a place where our cases and our hospitalizations are uh, so high that we must do something uh, to settle things down. I have been sounding the alarm about our rising case rates and hospitalizations uh, for some time, and we are now at a critical inflection point. Uh, in fact, what we do or what we don't do starting today may mean a matter of life and death for many living in our county. So our case rates and our hospitalizations continue to surge. We have a few graphs here to show you. Uh, I'm going to tell you what I see and I want to show you what I see. I want the public and all of you to know and to see what we know and what we see and why we're making the decisions that we're making. This is our epidemic curve that you've seen many times. And you can see that over there on the far part of the curve in November, our case rates have been surging uh, since the beginning of November. Um, in fact, we now have the highest case rate of any county in the San Francisco Bay Area. Just today, we had 760 new cases, far shattering any previous record by over 200 cases. Those cases were from people who had their specimens collected, 95% um, of them over the last five days. Uh, so these are recent cases. In addition, and our next slide, our next uh, graphic, these are hospitalizations. Uh, all of our hospitals combined, these are the number of people with COVID in hospital beds over time. And you can again see the very sharp rise that's uh, been occurring in November. Uh, today, the number of people uh, with COVID in hospitals across our county is 239. That is also a record. We have never had that many people in hosp uh, with COVID requiring hospitalization um, ever in, in the pandemic to date. People hospitalized with COVID, that number has more than doubled since November 12th, as you can see there. We had just 110 on November 12th, and we now have 239. 
And most concerning, many of our hospitals, we can go to the next one, have very little remaining capacity in their ICUs. And this is particularly in hospitals serving communities that have been most heavily impacted by COVID. This pandemic is like a high-speed train and our projections tell us that we are on target to derail by around the third week of December if we don't apply breaks right now with all our collective might. To further complicate our situation, we also have many added challenges at this point in the pandemic. Um, these projections that we have, they don't account for the fact that our hospitals typically fill with patients this time of year, whether it be from cold and flu or for other reasons. So there's even less uh, capacity to absorb a surge in COVID patients. These hospitals, these uh, projections that we have also don't take into account Thanksgiving, where many people did gather and many people did travel and we anticipate that this is going to create a surge, also not accounted for in our current projections. In addition, whereas in the past, in the spring and in the summer, when we were surging, we would always know that there would be healthcare workers, travelers from other parts of the country that could come in and help if we needed. And right now, as you know, every part of the country is experiencing a COVID surge as we are. And so we must plan to ensure that we are able to take care uh, of ourselves with the healthcare workers uh, currently in our hospitals. So this is a, the, our, our, hosp, our hospitalizations are a significant concern and they are the primary driver for the decisions uh, that we are making. We want to ensure as always that everyone who needs care, be it because they are ill with COVID or have a heart attack or stroke or a trauma victim or simply need to deliver a child, that they have access to the best health care available with trained staff to care for them. And so today we are between an extreme rock and a hard place. Of course, we will be continuing our focused measures to control COVID, our testing, our contact tracing, um, our outbreak investigations, isolation, quarantine, education, public communication, enforcement, all of those things we will continue to do yet we must do more we must take broader measures because our focused measures as we've seen are no match for the tsunami of cases and hospitalizations uh, that are coming so we will continue to go all in and we are asking everyone in the community to stand with us and to do the same so today we are announcing a tightening of our directives and james will discuss these details this is not a shelter in place order uh, as I issued in March, but nevertheless, the broader message is simple. And that is that we urge everyone to stay home to the greatest extent that you can. Please stay home. Do not go out unless it is for essential reasons or essential purposes. We are in the midst of this severe surge I want you to know that we do not ask people to take these measures lightly. We do not put these restrictions on businesses lightly. These are extraordinarily, extraordinarily painful and difficult decisions, but it is a matter of life and death and we must slow this train or it will derail. But I am confident that together we can do this. We can beat it back. We have done it before and we will do it again. Thank you so much. And I'm going to turn it over to uh, James to provide further detail. As Dr. Cody noted, we are making a number of changes in the existing directives that we have in place to help try to bring down the increase in cases and hospitalizations here in Santa Clara County. I'm gonna walk through what some of those key changes are, and of course they'll be available on our website. 
we have an executive summary that we're putting out. These changes will go into effect on Monday and will remain in place until at least December 21st. First and most significantly, we are across the board reducing the capacity in indoor facilities that are open to the public. Specifically, stores and all other facilities open to the public will be limited to a 10% capacity indoors. Grocery stores, drug stores, and pharmacies, however, will be allowed to operate at 25% capacity indoors. And that's to ensure sufficient access to food and medicine. In addition, to help make these capacity limitations real, all facilities open to the public must establish a metering system to ensure that the applicable capacity limits are not exceeded. So for example, they can achieve that by posting somebody at the entrance to count those entering or exiting. Again, these capacity limits will be applying across the board to indoor facilities open to the public. For outdoor gatherings, we'll continue to allow outdoor gatherings, and the state allows them for First Amendment purposes, such as religious services or protests, even in the purple tier. However, the maximum will be reduced to 100 people. For professional collegiate and youth sports, all recreational activities that involve physical contact or close proximity with persons outside of one's household, including all contact sports, will be temporarily prohibited. People can continue to engage in other outdoor athletic or recreational activities that don't involve direct contact or close proximity. Card rooms, both indoors and outdoors, will be temporarily closed. Hotels and other lodging facilities will be only open for essential travel or for use to facilitate isolation and quarantine. And we're issuing a new mandatory directive related to travel that discourages any leisure or non-essential travel and requires a quarantine for 14 days upon return to the county if you've traveled from more than 150 miles away. Healthcare workers who are traveling into the county to provide care to patients or those traveling into the county to obtain treatment are exempt from this requirement. Our hope is that these measures layered on top of the measures that the state has taken with the purple tier closures and the additional measure that the state has taken for the 10 p.m. to 5 a.m. limitation on only allowing essential businesses and activities to be open. Our hope is that these additional measures will bring down the rate of growth such that our hospitals will not be overwhelmed. I want to reemphasize some of the numbers that Dr. Cody already mentioned. 760 new cases today, it's a new record. 215 more cases than our last record from just a few days ago. 239 hospitalizations, including 59 new hospitalizations yesterday, 71 of whom are in our ICUs. Again, record number of hospitalizations. These are not records that we want to have here in Santa Clara County. Um, and together, we believe that if we strictly adhere to these safety protocols, we can once again rein in this surge, ensure that access to health care is available, uh, and help keep our community safe and avoid countless serious illnesses and death. I'm going to now turn it over to Dr. Clifford Wang, Chair of the Department of Medicine at Valley Medical Center. Well, good afternoon. I just came from the COVID unit, and we are all feeling and seeing the impact of COVID-19 in our ICUs and our medical surgical units. Um, 
Our staff, physicians and nurses and other staff, are working round the clock, doing extra shifts to care for all the patients. It's a stressful time, but we know that we're heading into probably one of the most toughest periods of the pandemic um, because we're, hitting, we're getting hit both with COVID and non-COVID cases. This is one of the busiest times of the year. Um, it's a time when we're just starting to see the flu early on, but we haven't even seen its um, apex yet. We have to be open to other patients that have other conditions, heart attacks, strokes, accidents. We really need to protect the healthcare system from being overwhelmed um, and overburdened, overcrowded. Um, it's the lifeline of our community. So we really need your help to really decrease the spread of this condition, COVID-19, so that we can keep our doors open to all patients during this time. Please wear a mask, physically distance, avoid large, ga large gatherings, and try to stay at home as much as you can. We really appreciate your help. We're counting on the whole community. Please help us during this time. Thank you.